Hello everyone, this is Mini Ninja speaking, and this is both somehow the combination Piccolo Day as well as Goku Day. Now, since I don't have a proper Piccolo bootleg to talk about today, we're going to be looking at one of the figures from this particular eBay lot that I happened to have picked up recently, which as you can kind of see from the first shot, was delivered unceremoniously to me. But, that being said, we have the Super Saiyan Son Goku Legendary Super Saiyan bootleg here, which we're going to do the uh, usual roundabouts of a uh, quick height check, articulation and uh, visuals, accessory check, and then a uh, comparison with the real one as we happen to have it. Now, as you can see, the figure stands at about 6.5 inches tall here, and in terms of its initial checks as well as the uh, articulation check, you can tell right away we have some fitting issues going on. Uh, namely, the parts don't fit properly on there. The head bangs don't really fit on there, and you can just tell from the way the actual articulation moves that there is something funny going on here. And the figure is not very cleaned up. Namely, there's a lot of flash going on here. They did not fix this thing from the demolding process at all. So, one second as we fix something here, uh, cleaning it up, you can now see the articulation on that shoulder is working like it's supposed to. Although the actual joints themselves are a combination of extremely snug, like the shoulder and the elbow in particular, to being rather loose, like some of the wrist parts. And the neck joint on this figure was uh, abysmal, as you can kind of tell from earlier. Now, the reason why this is so often here, in general, as we see the wrist go completely off on that one with very little effort, is that this figure was created by a process of recasting the various parts. Now, what that means for you is that basically, rather than having access to the original molds or having factory defect parts, they basically took a version of the figure, probably retail release, copied it, made molds out of that copy, and then used those new molds to recast and remake the parts again. Which makes all the new parts slightly smaller than supposed to. Meaning that the articulation, as we see that leg come off with no effort at all, uh, the articulation will not work like it's supposed to because it doesn't. the joints don't fit in the body parts that they're going into. And it doesn't help that the parts that they're using are kind of garbage like those hip joints. Now, what this means is, in terms of this figure splits, it really can't do the splits at all. Basically, you have to bend the legs out of the way in order to make that. The upper body, the shoulders kind of work extremely tightly, but they do. But this figure has basically uh, little to no uh, butterfly, not butterfly, sorry, ab crunch. It has very little ab crunch at all. And that's also because the actual articulation points for that are missing, as we're going to reveal later more on in more detail. Now, going on to the accessories, yeah, now we're looking at similar lack of detailing, or attention to detail, I should really say, going on here. Now, the decals themselves on some of the faces look pretty decent, passable at the very least, but as you might notice, there's a lot of different finishes going on on this figure, as we see the hair for the other part, once again, not very cleaned, but for the skin tone in particular, it's a combination of both flat finish as well as extremely glossy finish. And that's because this whole thing is very unpolished. The faces kind of fit into the various heads, but with a lot of effort. However, the bangs on the various heads, they mostly don't fit. Like that one technically fits in there, but it was a bit of a loose fit. It comes off fairly easily for the bootleg. And the bangs on this head, uh, both of them that are meant to go on there, once again, they sort of fit into the bags, however, the hair is slightly smaller than it should be compared to the rest of the... or the bangs are slightly smaller than they should be fitting, so they don't actually reach all the way back. Meaning that the actual space behind the bangs are exposed. Sometimes they don't even go around the whole head, like that one. It's basically unusable. Uh, here's for uh, reference what looks like with the other hair piece on there, the more... the ones meant for more of uh, power charging. Um, as you can see, it technically does fit on there, but it looks awful. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. Now, in terms of finish, once again, well, there's a, there's honestly just a lot of like odd scuffs and garbage going on on some of these hands. And on other ones, you have, okay, nothing strange going on, but it's just a very, uh, you know, there's a noticeable loss of detail going on in terms of the fingers. Because, once again, these are not factory originals, these are not factory defects. These are copies of the original release. And speaking of odd copies, I have no idea what's going on with this Kamehameha ball. It's not a ball, it's an oval. 
it technically fits. It will fit on both of the hands just fine. And somehow the uh, various rays actually do manage to go in there without too much hassle. They loosely fit in there, but that's technically kind of an issue that a lot of the different effect balls have on there, I found. So, uh, it technically works. I can tell you the finish is not right for what this figure was originally advertised with, but we'll go into more detail that actually just about now. Now, bootleg on left, real figure on right. Note how the real figure is not just taller, but all of its various bits are noticeably larger, even from a quick visual glance. Notice how there's more detail visible on, like the pants, the various uh, cuts and scrapes. They're either very muted on the bootleg or outright missing. Notice how the hair fits on properly. Also has a more shading you would see. Yeah. So this is the real one in this footage, by the way. And you can see this is how the ab crunch is supposed to work on. Work on it. It's actually quite accessible. You can turn it around both ways without too much hassle. The upper body is soft enough that it's able to fit. That's how it's supposed to work. Also, here's a quick look on the faces. Uh, technically, the uh, bootlegs on the left, I'm not gonna lie, some of them are actually outright passable, not counting that last one. But you can tell they're wrong. The hair bits, it's a difference of night and day. You can even see how they went cheap on the bootleg ones in order to kind of make uh, less parts grow. They just combined the uh, very even if I'm trying to play devil's advocate here, being that you are technically paying about half the price of what the original release is, there's still so much of a drop in quality overall, if we're being totally honest, that it's still pretty much no contest. I would have to say, pick up the real one while it's still available. Like, even as we do one last comparison shot so you can see that the neck pegs are roughly about the same between the two, so you could swap out the hair if you needed to from one bit to the next. Why would you want to? The bootleg ones are just so much wonkier. Which is what I can say about pretty much everything on the bootleg. Everything's just so much wonkier. Like, look at this. This is the Kamehameha bits assembled together, one side the next, beside the other. It's a no contest. This whole figure is a no contest. I can't really explain in any other terms of what's going on here. Just get the real one. The bootleg just has so many weird little odd decisions and, uh, ways they cheaped out that kind of make it so that it's, unless you have a very specific purpose for it, there's no sense to get it. And that being said, the real one has issues. Like there's definitely some build issues going on with the Legendary Super Saiyan official one, not to mention the weak ankles, which is something I am very annoyed with with a lot of different Tamashii Nations releases as of late, but that's a rant for another day. Going to the teardown part, or the breakdowns more specifically, we finally begin to understand some of the weird stuff with the upper torso in particular, as uh, that's one of the few sections I could safely separate on this toy. Uh, namely, the butterfly joints are like on a lever with cups on cups, and the uh, shoulder joints, the swivels, are the wrong shape. The actual upper body there, it's supposed to be circular, but they're oval shaped because they were not casted correctly. Now, lower abdomen and the uh, hips here, they're simplified versions, there's no surprise there. And we can see that the uh, hip joints themselves are actually really simplified uh, replacement versions. They don't do the same drop feature that the real figure had. So that explains why you couldn't do the splits on that. It was not physically possible. Basically, they're garbage replacement joints. Now, what that does mean, though, is that certain issues here can be fixed, mostly on the upper body. Uh, namely, first of all, for the swivels, as long as you do the, uh, the smart thing and suddenly turn the ovals into proper circles, Suddenly, you can actually use the swivel joints without any issue. It's no longer super tight. And the little silicone oil does a lot of work here. Uh, namely, that suddenly makes it so that the butterfly joints, even with the smaller upper torso, are able to move a lot smoother than they used to, and actually increase their range by quite a bit. Uh, don't mind that, I just didn't click it in properly at the time of this photo. Or video, I should say. So, I actually have a proper functioning upper body here. Now, that kind of leaves the question of what am I going to do with this thing? Since I don't need another Goku, I already have a properly working real one. What could I possibly do with this upper body and the little bits and pieces? And the rest of my scrap box, for that matter. Let's solve that another day. Take care.